So the longest prison term yet was just imposed on one of the insurrection defendants. But dozens of other defendants are planning to go to trial. Let's talk about the implications for those trials of Donald Trump remaining uncharged for his crimes, including inciting the insurrection. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So stiffer sentences are starting to be doled out for some of the insurrection defendants. Here's how the Washington Post just reported one such case. New Jersey man sentenced to 41 months for assaulting officer, stiffest punishment yet in January six cases. And that article begins, a New Jersey gym owner who punched a D.C. police officer outside the Capitol on January 6 was sentenced Wednesday to 41 months in prison by a federal judge who called his actions an affront to society and to the rule of law and said he was smart to plead guilty rather than take his chances with a jury that would see numerous videos of his actions. You know, when the judge tells the defendant, you were smart to plead guilty rather than go to trial, there's actually a counter argument to be made. Let's talk about one of the lesser discussed, lesser talked about reasons why Donald Trump absolutely must be charged with the crime he committed inciting the insurrection. Now, there are lots of defendants who have already pleaded guilty hundreds of them in fact, but there's a growing number of defendants who are insisting on going to trial. At the moment, there are somewhere between 30 and 40 insurrection defendants with trial dates set, and that number is growing by the day. How might a trial play out? Well, as of today, Donald Trump remains uncharged by the Department of Justice. Accordingly, a message continues to be sent that it was okay, it was legal, it was proper for Donald Trump to say and do what he said and did. He encouraged people to attack the U.S. Capitol to stop the vote certification. DOJ's inaction sends the signal that what Donald Trump did was lawful. Think about this, friends. Hundreds of insurrectionists have said, I was just doing what the president told me to do. That will be their defense at trial. And I would call that a non-frivolous defense. What do I mean by that? That's a defense that will resonate with some jurors. Think about it. There's a difference between a president of the United States telling you to do something that's legal versus telling you to do something that the system has announced is illegal. Stop the steal. Stop the vote certification. Stop what's going on in the U.S. Capitol. And they did. So if ever we needed the Department of Justice to announce through an indictment that what Donald Trump told people to do was illegal, it's now, thereby making it far more difficult for insurrectionists to make the following argument at trial. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what I did, I did because I was following the president's commands and directives. He told me to do this. He told me my vote was stolen. My election was stolen. My president was corruptly and fraudulently taken from me. He told me I had to go to the Capitol and stop it to save my democracy. He said that if I don't go down there and fight like hell, I wouldn't have my country anymore. And I love my country. So I did what my president told me to do to try to save it. That 
is what these defendants will argue to a jury. And by not charging Donald Trump with inciting the insurrection, the Department of Justice is breathing life and credibility into that argument. DOJ, please don't hand that defense to the insurrectionists on a silver platter. Charge Donald Trump with inciting the insurrection because what he did was criminal and because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.